conversation with very animated, some looks like you're looking at me. What I'd like to do is very briefly, if you remember your instructions, you had one person from each table who would get a chance to do this. But I would like to get a little bit of a feedback here if people want to ask what they said. Thank you for the show. Thank you. So um, I would like to go ahead, and I, and I only can take time for one person, and I'm hoping that that person can be brief and succinct. Brevity and succinctness is very important on this one, only because we have so many people here, and we want to give people a chance to sort of give a little bit of feedback. The thing I'm most curious about is hearing what are some of the solutions that you all think that we've heard about at your table that you came up with, the idea that you came up with. And I think picking the most salient one would probably be the most useful. So the hottest one, the one that can be described the most the, with the, the greatest deal of brevity would probably be the best way to go. And actually, um, do I have a volunteer level? Okay, no. Okay, so I'm going to Yeah. Hi, I'm Melvin Gibbs, and I am with Freedom House here in Richmond. And um, as many of you know, we run a soup kitchen at the Conrad Center down at Oliver Hill Way. Several years ago, there was a huge controversy about us moving from 302 West Canal Street to Oliver Hill. Um, and we knew that our population would change some. However, we are still feeding 300 people a day breakfast and dinner down at the Conrad Center. One of the challenges that I think um, Charles, Charles is working with us on, but one of the big challenges is transportation to the Conrad Center. We invite, and we did invite, many of the groups when we moved originally in 2007 to join us uh, in feeding the homeless and the working poor at the Conrad Center. And we had probably seven or eight groups that were organized on a regular basis to come to the Conrad Center, and they are still serving down there on the weekends and during the week. Um, but we know transportation is an issue. Peter Prizio and I at uh, Daily Planet, we're working right now on um, putting together a shuttle, a free shuttle for the homeless, a pilot project for six months uh, at a cost of $25,000. Um, we have the bus and we have the driver. We think we have 20,000 of the 25,000 needed pledged and committed. And so we're hoping that this will resolve some of the issues with the park being closed, but we need to take it more than six months. So I think um, one of the issues and when we agreed over here is that we can coordinate our efforts uh, in one central location, have transportation to and from a facility that is new, air conditioned, heated, well lit, um, has other services available to those homeless, and which is also a community for those that we serve. That is a good solution to trying to coordinate all of our efforts, all of our services, and everybody can still mission and deliver their services to those in need. Our table felt that the only acceptable solution is to keep a portion of the park open at all times. So that those using the park can continue to enter the park, portable potties or other toilet facilities must be provided, and organizations providing services to the park must be allowed to do so, including hand sanitizing facilities, and then someone suggested that uh, the basement of the landmark might be uh, a facility that could be used. Um, and there shall be a representative of the uh, student population, the homeless population, and service providers on any uh, advisory committee or any other such uh, organization that will be making decisions about uh, Monroe Park for the renovation and anything that might be done in the future. Thank you. that weren't being addressed just by, by asking these specific questions. So we had a lot of questions that we wanted to ask. 
So some of the, we felt like we had a lot of people here from different areas. Um, I'm, I'm at VCU and I have concerns for my students for safety. Some of the residents have concern for safety um, and cleaning the, and keeping the park clean after people are serving. But we also had concerns about um, maybe there's, there's other ways to think outside the box that we could um, meet everybody's concerns, that we could maybe um, <coughs> people could serve, say, down at the War Memorial or serve in an open downtown. I think a lot of groups want space that's open. They don't want a building, so they want an open downtown where you don't have to walk, you know, uh, two miles down to the Conrad Center, but that it's downtown and it's accessible and it's open for people for a feeding uh, space. We also had concerns about um, just the idea of gentrifying the park and that maybe the idea of gentrifying the park and spending a lot of money on it but then keeping it open for homeless people later are two opposing ideas that are not going to work and that maybe study, more study needs to be done around this whole issue anyway. Um, we had concerns about the amount of money being spent on the park, uh, $6.2 million dollars is a lot of money to spend on that park and maybe there's ways to do it less expensively. We understood the concerns of the architect, uh, landscape architect, that you, you can't close it off, that it has to be, um, you know, it would cost a lot more money if you, if you partitioned it. So we understand that. And maybe there's other things that can be done. But we had all of these concerns, and we just thought maybe more forums like this would get some of these, all of these issues addressed rather than just a few. Yes. Table talked about um, the diversification of the service providers that are here now and keeping the park open during uh, whatever renovations they chose to do um, I think is a, is a phenomenal idea. One thing that we thought might be um, you know, a possibility would be to create an environment um, within the park uh, where the service providers could utilize different resources that they may not have now. Um, I know one service provider that cooks food for 100 people a week on a four burner stove in an apartment. You know, he could really use something like that. Uh, we all could use that type of environment. Keeping the park open, renovating that piece of it to enable the service providers rather than restrict them or divide them as what we think is in the, everyone's best interest. Gentrification is not um, something that I'm looking forward to. What I'm looking forward to is when homeless people are considered people just like you and me. I'm uh, Kenny Rowe. I'm from Gooseman County. This uh, city stuff is uh, new to me, <laughs> but uh, since I've been coming into the city for almost two years driving the Caritas bus, I am not employed by Caritas, so I'm not representing them. I'm representing me and my heart. That's right. Uh, I'm working with these people on a daily basis. I see their needs. I know their needs. I communicate with them daily. They would like a nice warm place to go to. They would like some way, some way to get out of the weather. They would like support on uh, finding jobs. I am pursuing a day support center. So uh, the park and the day support center can work hand in hand. Right. Thanks. Thank you. about some of this. 
So, you know, letting us know, is this working? And if it's not, how do we come back together to address some of these other issues? Um, and the, the need for a centralized site where people can just be and hang out, and I don't know, Mel, if that's even on the radar as you're talking about, you're not a yes. So that could be the warm, safe place for our friends to, to just be and belong. And welcome other service providers to come in and do exactly what they're doing now with an open door of the Conrad Center. Um, that was a question that kept coming up at my table, and I'm so thankful you're here to answer that. So thank you. that is poor will always be with us. Amen. And we yeah. don't ever know where we're going to be in life. No. We don't ever know whose head, whose pillow we're going to have to have head on. And God said, what you do to the least of these, you can do to me. <laughs> so yeah. 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 My name is Jameson Price. Our table, when we started to talk about alternative spaces, we came up with the discussion of saying, uh, well, the city would have to find um, this type of space, a building. There is a green space uh, close by. And when we actually started thinking about finding an alternative space, whether it be allocating funds to find it or the city to find it, it made a lot more sense for the park to just stay open. Um, <laughs> distribute money to find an alternative space if that money can be used to section off pieces of the park and during the construction keep parts of the park open. And that is essentially what we came to the conclusion of, that, that it's not a matter of if the park becomes closed, it's the park won't be closed, it needs to be open. Anything that they wanted to add or any, from any of the tables that were not represented? Real, real briefly, I had this idea prior to even knowing the park was considered being closed. So I, I knew this idea needed to be established even before that happened. I, just, I want to address the issue of um, transportation that's been discussed a couple of times. This isn't just an issue about transportation for these people. This is about an environment that they can socialize with one another mm -hmm. in their own community. Mm -hmm. You can't take that away from them. No. Yep. So one of the things I'd like to say is clearly, I think you can see from the diversity of comments that were here and opinions that were represented, you know, there was no one key thing that came that was really sort of the purpose of it. Exactly. Well, I think we would disagree with that. Yeah. Park should not be closed. Yeah. We, would, we would disagree with yeah. yeah. that. Well, no, no, no. Well, to get to that. Right. So I think one of the things when we were really here to, to discuss was talking about how can we continue to coordinate services in a way using the power of people who are interested in volunteering and linking that up with people in a way that is decent, respectful, and it continues to happen. So what I was getting ready to say is that clearly there's still a need in our community and there's still lots of questions about how that need needs to be addressed. And I think the nice thing about this evening is it gave folks an opportunity to really sit down across the table and start to have a conversation that may not have ordinarily happened in some ways with people you might not have had it with. So I think just for that, I think that was an important endeavor. As I have told many of you who had asked me questions throughout the night, I am not an architect. I'm a social worker, so I cannot speak to the closing of the park. I have nothing to really contribute to that part of the conversation. I know there are people who are here who also have conversation, who are having conversations about that. And my comment to you, officially from Homewood, is please take that conversation and have that with your representatives. But what we were really interested in having here tonight was really talking about how can we leak the people who want to serve back to those communities that are in desperate need of having those services. So as I said, 
One of the things that I would like to do out of this is really encourage people to continue these kinds of conversations. I'm not quite sure what council has in mind for how they would like to go about doing this, but I, I think for a lot of the people who are here in this room tonight, there was a lot of benefit for having this type of conversation and this sort of dialogue. And I hope it's not just one of those things that just falls and withers on the vine. Um, the thing that I, I need to do now is just sort of a logistical piece of this is as we wrap up, I'm going to have to turn it back over to Councilman Sandals because this part of the facilitation is, is kind of come to a close, at least for us. But I'm going to let him address any of the other people who are here that want to talk about the actual opening and closing of the park. But one thing that I would like to, uh, to ask each of you to do, because clearly there is a lot of volunteer energy in this room, and there's a lot of mobility. If you are really, truly concerned and interested in really helping people who are homeless make that transition, I would really encourage you to make sure that you are tapping in to the wealth of service providing agencies in our community. Because I think even the conversations about having space for the service providers in the park is such a great way to link you know, community organizing with having service providers together in a similar space. It's just, it's, it's amazing the things that we'll be able to do if we, can, if we can cross those sorts of bridges. So one of the ways that you can do that if you're interested in making that connection, on November the 18th, there's gonna be a Project Homeless Connect. This is the fourth one we've done in our community. We've served 700 people last year who were homeless or were close to homelessness. And we would encourage you to volunteer or let people know about that event. It's targeted for the population that is really at the park, and it really is a good opportunity to get the word out and let people know about the resources that are in our community. And the nice thing about it is there are resources on site to make that happen. So I'm going to turn it over to Councilman Samuels right now. Again, thank you for giving me the time to be part of this conversation. And I'll turn it over to him and let him talk about next steps in summer. I just want to echo Erica's statements. I am so happy that all of you are willing to come out, spend your own time to talk about something that needs to be talked about. Uh, it's real easy to drive past the other park. It's real easy to drive past the other places where homeless folks are spending the days and think something else is done. But what? How can I help? And tonight, I feel like we've made a step in making folks realize or encouraging folks because there, it's more than just one person working here. All of you all care enough to come out and make sure that you, oh, just to see that you guys are not alone. There are friends out there who you may not know who are also very interested in making sure the homeless population, the folks that just want their meal, that need that extra little help in your weekly, monthly budget, the folks that are trying to make sure the park is a beautiful place for everybody are all in the same boat. And, and I couldn't be happier about the fact that you all are willing to spend time doing that tonight. I really appreciate you coming out. And what's more, I appreciate the fact that you guys were able to do it all in under the two hours that we uh, allocated for tonight. I know it's going to take the folks a while to wrap up, and I know it's going to take a while for me to clean up. So thank you all again for coming tonight. I really appreciate it. Please give yourselves a round of applause. Sir, I would just like to thank you for coming in. I would like to invite you to ride the bus with the people, to get to know them, to get to understand them even more, because I think it would also change your heart in a lot of ways. Thank you.